Their actions suggest a strategy not of bridge building, but of burning bridges with gusto. The couple's continuous critique of the very institution that once embraced them has not gone unnoticed or unscrutinized. They claim to seek privacy while paradoxically pursuing publicity. Hello everyone! Welcome to my channel! Right now, we delve into the latest royal uproar. Harry, once the darling of Windsor, now seems to be auditioning for the role of the family rebel. Gone are the days of silent nods and demure waves. In tonight's episode, we explore how Harry has swapped the royal rulebook for what appears to be a particularly fiery episode of an American courtroom drama. Has he forgotten the Queen's age-old mantra of never complain? Never explain? Or has he simply rewritten it to always complain? Excessively explain. Join us with Mr. Adam, people who gossip about the royal family. As we unpack whether Harry is pioneering a new royal protocol or just pioneering his way into more headlines. Freya, have you seen Harry honor our revered queen once? Let alone the queen, Harry has not honored a single member of his family since his wife appeared on the yet seen in London in 2016, and anyone who believes he has must be blind as well as deaf. As the narrative unfolds, it's become increasingly clear that Harry's departure from royal protocol isn't just a breakaway, it's more of a full-blown sprint. With every interview, every tell-all, it seems he has taken to airing not just the royal laundry, but also stitching new narratives that seem tailored to suit his new role across the pond. Since Meghan's entrance, the once-beloved prince has transformed, swapping his royal mantle for what seems like a vendetta vest, their foray into freedom marked by public grievances and an unending parade of perceived injustices, paints a stark contrast to the stoic silences and stiff upper lips of his relatives. The Sussexes have not only stepped back from royal duty, but seem to have stepped into a realm where every personal disappointment is grounds for public discourse. Their actions suggest a strategy not of bridge building, but of burning bridges with gusto. The couple's continuous critique of the very institution that once embraced them has not gone unnoticed or unscrutinized. They claim to seek privacy while paradoxically pursuing publicity, narrating their plights on every platform that will host them, from opulent Oprah interviews to Netflix deals promising to give an inside look into their estranged royal life. If honoring one's family includes upholding its dignity, respecting its members, and preserving its private sanctuaries. Then indeed, one might say Harry has missed the mark. His commitment seems to lie not with the continuity of the crown, but with the cultivation of a new celebrity status, one that thrives not on royal duty, but on royal discord. To be exact, he is an ungrateful person. Obviously, everyone knows how happy they were in England. Do you think they were too ambitious and lost it all? Of course. It's too late now. Until he left London, he and his wife lived rent-free in central London and were able to go and do more or less what they wanted. They had staff and advisors at no cost to themselves, a clothes allowance. Megan spent one millions in 18 months but seldom looked smart and dignified, and twos, five million from Prince Charles on which to live. Megan is a woman without sense. Their few engagements between marriage and departure for the U.S. were almost all surrounded by controversy in some way or other. Don't believe me? Think back. The first one. The Royal Garden Party at Buckingham Palace. Four days after the wedding. Not long into the reception, Meghan complained she was bored, overheard by some of the guests. And she and Harry were escorted off the premises. With the Queen, when Meghan was asked to wear a hat, and she wouldn't so, by the end of the day, her hair was a complete mess, while the queen continued to look clean and fresh as she had when she came off the train, crossing her legs. Following that were trips to Australia and South Africa. Meghan was constantly embroiled in controversy. Can you share more about Meghan's trips? Leaving a market in Fiji early. In Australia, Meghan threw a tantrum because they didn't have the whole of Admiralty House, but instead had to share it with Sir Peter and Lady Cosgrove. A wing of the house wasn't enough for her, throwing tea over some poor unfortunate person, for which the then Prince Charles had to pay $250,000 in compensation, to say nothing of endless and very loud, rose between the couple. South Africa. During their tour of South Africa, 
Meghan Markle mentioned that the family stayed in a housing unit, which, in fact, was one of Cape Town's world-class hotels. She revealed this detail in her podcast, where she recounted the incident of a fire in her son Archie's nursery during their stay. The fire occurred at the official residence in Cape Town, but fortunately, only the heater was damaged, not the entire house or room too. Archie was just four and a half months old at the time. Quite an eventful trip, I must say. It transpired that said heater was one Megan brought out with her to South Africa. As if they didn't have any form of heating out there. And then, of course, the infamous interview with Tom Bradby in which Megan, when asked how she was, complained. Thank you for asking because not many people have asked if I'm okay. That, after visiting some of the poorest and least advantaged people in the S.A. And so it went on, wearing the wrong clothes for the occasion, walking in front of Harry pushing him out of the way, stories of bullying. And then do they recognize the problem and fix it? And going to the queen to ask if, as they were so popular and everyone wanted to see them, they could have the best engagements instead of giving them to William and Catherine, who were so boring, they were firmly put in their place and told, it doesn't work like that, then leaving for Canada, followed by Los Angeles, bullying his father, trying to get more money than the two. Five he had already given them, in fact, complaining that he had cut them off, Harry phoning and phoning him for cash until the he refused to take the calls. So then Meghan started to phone and ask until no calls were accepted. Then Harry started on the Queen, begging her for money, without success. But she did ask Charles why he wasn't giving anything to Harry, and Prince Charles told his mother that he wasn't a bank. Then Queen stopped taking his calls. Also, speaking of the Queen... I feel that Harry is not qualified to be a grandson. How much he disappointed Queen Elizabeth and did things to hurt her. Calling their daughter Lilibet and claiming they had spoken to the Queen and she was happy with it. Utter rubbish. We now hear that the Queen was furious and declared, I don't own the palaces. I don't own the paintings. The only thing I own is my name. And now they've taken that. He only saw the Queen very briefly on his visits from the USA. He saw her in March 2020 before they left for the U.S., and did not come back until Prince Philip's funeral when I understand. He did not see any member of the family alone, and, I believe, he left for the U.S. that same day anyway. The next time they were over, they went to The Hague in April 2022 for the Invictus Games, and Harry claims they made a secret visit to see the Queen in Windsor. Reportedly, they also saw his father, too. The Queen died on September 8th, 2022. After Harry had turned down all invitations to go to Balmoral to visit her, because of a row with Meghan, he arrived after the Queen had died. So at what time would Harry have had time to discuss his court cases with the Queen, who abhorred any kind of legal action that could possibly bring the royal family into disrepute? And telling the court about private events is not a good idea when your family is trying to maintain a never-complain, never-explain mantra. So, no. The Queen would not have given any guidance to Harry about his legal actions. And had she ever been consulted? I suspect her comment would have been, in modern jargon, don't even go there. As for any guidance received, since his wife has told him she can confer with his mother, I suspect she may also have told Harry that his grandmother approves of his actions and, fool that he is, he believes what she says. Yes, they blatantly named their daughter after the Queen and apparently said she approved. What a blatant liar. But in reality, there are no children. What do you think of Harry and Meghan's children? Do they really exist? No uterus. No babies. So that's a charade. Her own family confirmed she had a hysterectomy from too many abortions and an infection. Further witness connected that with her yacht experience with Andrew. But that person won't give their name. So I digress. Let's go with what her family said. Dad paid for the hysterectomy and freezing eggs. Megan has no maternal connections with the kids. But as a narcissist, that is typical. So hard to get a read if one or both are bio hers or not. I believe there was an Archie, but either the product of one of the women he was rough with that got covered up, or a surrogate. I believe that the woman lives in the UK, regardless of the scenario, and the child has a different name for his protection. I believe that the many times we saw Megan being less than maternal, in the sun, being held awkwardly with no bonnet on, the duck-rabbit reading where I noticed even at the time how bossy Meg's was with the child. 
the pictures of Harry blocking Megan from the newborn, etc. I believe that Megan pissed off the mother, and she is not allowed near the child. I believe Harry has a connection, and visits the child in the UK on Archie's birthday. He is always there, coincidentally, on that date, not celebrating the charade in the US. You notice after Africa, when we saw the baby Archie, then we see pictures of Gavin Jingris, like the ones of Hartford Schroeder. But then Megan would have fallen out with those mothers, as she does so well. Now, we seldom see kids. The argument of wanting privacy for kids is moot when before you were exploiting them. As a narcissist, she would have those kids dressed in designer gear and merch them to death. But now they take off on trips during birthdays and special occasions like a childless couple, which I believe they are. So, no anchor, no child support. The bio mothers take care of the kids. I don't think there ever was a Lilibet. There is no evidence but a pack of lies that she exists. I think Megan's deranged antics stumped the royal family and she just did what she wanted. One can dress like a pregnant mother or put a lampshade on their head. There is no stopping them, but a proper family may not want those secrets to get out. I think the announcement that it is all a charade is what she holds over Harry's head. I don't think the royal family cares anymore. The queen allegedly was the one who paid a lot of money to scrub the internet of Meghan's wrongdoings so as not to embarrass the family, a decision she is probably rolling in her grave about. Let it all come out! We already know. The only anchor is the one around Harry's neck, called Meghan. It is clear that both Harry and Meghan have always sought to undermine and oppose the royal family, especially Queen Elizabeth. The person behind Harry's stupid actions is Meghan, and the person directly attacking the royal family is also Meghan. Why did she have to go to such lengths? And the royal family, why did they let her act so recklessly without punishing Meghan? As far as I know, Meghan was not appreciated by the royals for her ability to voice her opinions. After Walt, Disney's Little Mermaid made her realize that she had a voice and break the stuffy old royal traditions. My impression is that this was not what her role in the firm was all about. The royals accepted her into their fold as a new member of the family and not as a change agent to modernize the monarchy, as Princess Anne stated. Her advice to Meghan was to pick a charity do research on it and go with it, to support and enhance the goals of this charity. Apparently, Meghan looked somewhat confused by this advice, and the princess realized that Meghan would likely not succeed in what she was expected to do as a royal. It also appears to me that her expectation was that by using Harry as leverage, she was hoping to revamp single-handedly a thousand-year-old institution to fit what she believed was necessary to create an arena of cheering subjects, as in the early days of the Beatles although she would now be the star as the new and shiny member of the royals. And, foolishly, Harry, who really should know better but doesn't, was encouraging her on. There was enough cheering when the queen celebrated her jubilee. But celebrity status is not the purpose of the monarchy. The royals are already acknowledged as high profile as it is. They are duty-bound, and they have their acknowledged purpose in British society and the Commonwealth. Megan had her opportunity to modernize as an employee with Spotify and Netflix, but apparently she couldn't handle it, at least according to the CEOs. What this ultimately tells you is, if it ain't broke, why fix it? Maybe her ambitions are larger than her abilities to achieve whatever it is that she envisions. If this is not the case, then she should prove her dreams of a better, whatever it is, that she is trying to achieve where it is sought and desired and needed and requires her as a change agent, and she is therefore provided with the opportunity to fulfill the organization's goals and ultimate vision, which will be congruent with her personal agenda. There is an opinion that this is a dead man walking 100%, and Meghan is directly complicit in enabling Harry to publicly kill himself on a world stage. William Morris Endeavor and any PR agency with a functioning brain also have Harry's royal blood on their hands. How can King Charles and anyone who once cared for Harry not be scared out of their minds as they are powerless to regain the old Harry? pre Meghan and Harry must take responsibility for his actions. What do you think about this view? Wow. Great idea and great question. Yes. Harry is solely responsible for his own actions as a middle-aged, grown-ass man. 
drugs or arrested development aside, but he is clearly in the throes of a deadly, progressive addiction that makes Harry even more isolated and exiled than the delusions of his codependent. Using wife thinking America would fall down, worshipping at royalty's feet. When it's all just been an inhumane experiment in global embarrassment and endless cringe memes and viral gifs, we no doubt have heard it all before. His mum, his life work as an ambulance chasing litigant, the unconscious bias, his endless doomed victimhood. And where are the innocent victims with no voice or interview chair to give them a spotlight in all this? Where are your children? Harry, how are they being affected by all this? Why are they never seen? And what are they seeing? Drug paraphernalia, the drugs themselves, parents physically fighting, and chemically compromised? We know the Harkles are not together under one roof as a couple 24-7, so how does that fare with the stability of two dependent toddlers? Nannies and nursery wings don't guarantee zero exposure to addiction and mental illness displayed by their parents. You never hear a dead celebrity's adult child in interviews say, no, I didn't see or know a thing about my dad's prolific drug use. I was locked away in the nursery with my loving nannies. Nothing to see here, so move along. Nannies get fired at will, and the child's already shaky sense of object permanence goes out the window. Kids mature, and their depth of understanding not being considered here is a likely lethal mistake. The odds of Harry's own children being addicted or in a dead-end adult relationship with an addict are mathematically probable. The odds that Harry's kids will wake up one day, sooner than later, Without a living father are also becoming a mathematical probability every day as Harry's disease has already visibly affected every area of his life family. Reputation, work, marriage, and, of course, his own children. Add the fear that Harry wasn't born right, per Lady C, and you have a walking morality tale that's already been written if the trajectory doesn't change, and why should it? Harry is a brain-damaged individual, whether the damage was in the womb or the effects of his prolific, self-admitted, habitual drug use, or a combination of the two. He is annoyingly thick, yet remains cocooned in his rarefied bubble, so stubborn and uniquely starved of reality and consequences. His hubris and stubborn arrogance shine through his litany of petty grievances. He won't retreat, and he is incapable of learning. He can never admit defeat. Hi, I'm J.H., I'm in a deep homosexual panic and identity crisis, and I can never admit Megan is my worst mistake as that will negate my entire victimhood narrative and whinge fest. I must always prove my family wrong at any cost or the sun won't come up tomorrow as I know it. We always assume Harry's misogynistic abuse is limited to women he feels are inferior and at his disposal. But Megan is in danger herself, if Harry is truly piecing together how she tricked and brainwashed him in their entire organic relationship. He is a danger to himself and society if he's provoked and feels justified in his vengeance. His lifelong palace protection makes him even more lethal, erratic, and immune to understanding the consequences of his actions. America disliking Harry and T.W. as much as the U.K. will not be an easy, warm, and fuzzy truth for Hawley. They do come together for work like buying awards he's not worthy of and even arrive and depart separately in different vehicles at the same loved-up event. I am correct, like so many others, who could see their bond was freakishly fake and toxic, as you can see in their last event in the UK, where she would not let go of his hand, only dropping hands to clear a table and then instantly clasp hands again once the table is no longer in their path. That is just a glimpse of how fucked up, addicted, and remedially juvenile these two candy stripers are. I totally agree with what you said. I have never believed the hag loved Harry. I think she was well aware of his addiction and is probably spoon-feeding them now. His goal has been the same all along. Marry some rich but dumb white man, isolate him from everyone, and watch him implode. He won't even be cold when she asks about her inheritance. I think she will be bitterly disappointed. And then there is the fact that time has not been kind to Megan. Do I doubt too many men would be desperate or stupid enough to bed her? Harry's daddy might allow him back in the UK, to some faraway cottage somewhere, and Megan will end up back in the gutter, which has been her only successful career move. Even so, Harry is a bomb ready to go off. I don't know if it's true or not, but it was reported on one of the news stations. 
not the tabloid-type channels. He's had three mental-emotional breakdowns in California that sent him to the ER. Have no idea about being admitted. But perhaps it was something a good shot of Ativan fixed. I don't know, but it's easy to see he's a mess. Anybody who hangs on for decades to little pricks and pecks in life the way he does is not stable. He also reportedly was having a breakdown behind the scenes at the Tillman Award event. Over having to go on stage, but Markle pressured him to do it. I'm sure it was when she thought she would be included up there and could do all the speaking. But her pressuring, as only she can do, only gained her his undisguised repulsion and I thought showed defiance and a bit of anger. I was actually surprised. Even his speech sounded a bit edgy to me. He does seem to be at the end of his rope. If, as you say, he finally admits and finally removes the blinders, the truth won't be easy on him. He's completely thrown away everything friends, family, position, trust, everything, and has done so in a harsh, offensive, and damaging way. I fear for anybody in his way. This is an increasingly messed up world, with a lot of psychos out there, and Harry seems to be one of them. He's unhealthily obsessed with his mother, even washing over into some forbidden areas, it seems, and is to the point of hearing voices. Scary guy in situation. Well, we had a smooth conversation. Right. Thank you for watching our video. Thank you very much. Don't forget to support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. Especially, please express your thoughts in the comments below. I will read all your shares and suggestions. Now, goodbye, and see you again.